Welcome. This is now video number four on the construction of hyperreal numbers. Let me recap what we have done so far. First, we had defined Rn, which is a set of all sequence of real numbers, on which we have addition and multiplication. We write capital A, an element of Rn, with elements being real number small a, and a with a bar below it is kept for constant sequences. In particular, we have 0 and 1, which are constant sequences. Those are the additive and multiplicative identity of the ring here, which is formed by Rn under addition and multiplication. We also have mentioned that this is not a field because we have a bunch of elements that are not invertible. Our aim had been to build an equivalence relation, saying that A and B belongs to Rn are equivalent if and only if they are identical at a large number of places. To help with that, we define the set EAN of integers in N satisfying an equal bn. But still we were in need to agree on a way to refer to this set as large. It is now with the help of the non-principal ultra filter on n that we define the equivalence relation. a is equivalent to b if and only if the set of integer satisfying an equal bn belongs to the ultra filter. When A is equivalent to B, we are often going to say that they agree at almost all n, or they agree on a large set, or they agree almost everywhere, modulo f. Let me here take a minute to introduce some notations. Earlier, the set of integers n such that a n equal b n was written e a b. There is another notation that is very helpful for the same set, which consists of writing between square bracket a n equal b n. It allows us to generalize to other mathematical statement. For example, a n smaller than b n between square bracket refers to the set of integers n such that a n is smaller than b n. And for another example here, a n equal b n square between square, square bracket is the set of integer n such that a n equal b n square. It is now time to check that addition and multiplication are compatible with the equivalence relation. In other words, if a is equivalent to b and c is equivalent to d, then a plus c must be equivalent to b plus d, and a times c must be equivalent to b times d. If a is equivalent to b, then we know that the set of integers such as a n equal b n belongs to the ultra filter. And the same is true when c is equivalent to d. Therefore, the intersection of those two sets must belong to the ultra filter. This is axiom one of the definition of a filter. This intersection is the set of all integers such that a n equal b n and c n equal d n. Hence, for all the elements n in the set, we have a n plus c n equal b n plus d n. In addition, the intersection is a subset of the set of integers for which a n plus c n equal b n plus d n and this belongs to f. This is axiom uh, 2 of the definition of a, ultra of a filter. So this allows us finally to conclude that a plus c is equivalent to b plus d. And you can repeat the same derivation for multiplication. We can move on and define the equivalence class. I am going to write curly a the equivalence class of the sequence A. It is a set of all B 
elements of Rn, which are equivalent to A. In particular, the equivalent class of 1 is made of all the sequence equivalent to the constant sequence 1. Because I do not know how to write a curly 1, and because it is an agreed convention, we are going to write this star 1. Some of the sequence that are in this equivalence class are given here. And as long as they are equal to 1 almost everywhere, in the sense of the ultra filter, they belong to the class star 1. For any integer n, we can build the constant sequence here, for which we have the equivalence class that we are going to write star n. And we do the same for real numbers. Let us now build star r. It is a quotient set. I can write star r as a set of all equivalent classes of sequences in Rn. Um, I can use curly a if I insist on using curly a for equivalent classes. Be careful, not all the elements of star r are of the form star x. In fact, star r is not limited to the set of equivalent classes generated by constant sequences. So in general, curly a is not one of the elements we write star x. Now we can define addition and multiplication on star r. That's very easy. For a and b in star r, we define curly a plus b as the equivalent class of the sum of the sequence a plus b. And curly a times b is defined as the equivalent class of the product of the sequence a times b. And we observe that star r under addition and multiplication form a field, which means it is a ring and I will let you convince yourself that this is the case. But on top of that, it has only one non-invertible element, which is star zero. We can see that star zero and star one as an additive and multiplicative identity. We can also verify easily that every element has an additive inverse we write it minus a. It is, it is the equivalence class of an element in Rn which we write minus a again, itself defined by the sequence of elements minus a n. It is a bit more challenging to show that all elements of star r except 0 have a multiplicative inverse. To proceed, let A be an element of star R. It is the equivalent class of a sequence A. Because it is different from star 0, we know that the set of integers for which A n is different from 0 belongs to the ultra filter. In other words, it is almost everywhere different from 0. Let us build the inverse of A. We first define I A, a sequence in R n, with elements given by 1 over a n or 1. Then we define curly i a as the equivalence class of i a. We can now calculate curly a times curly i a, which is the equivalence class of the sequence formed by the product a and i a. The product of the elements here is either 0 or 1. It is 1 for all elements in this set, which belong to the ultra filter. So the set of integers n for which a n times i a n equal 1 belongs to f. Just a few more steps lead to the conclusion that every element curly a of star r has an inverse. On top of being a field, what we have here is an ordered field, which allow us for any a and b in star r to say that a is smaller or equal to b if 
the set, if and only if, the set of integer n, such that a n is smaller than b n, belongs to the ultra filter. In other words, looking at the element of a given sequence, we need to make sure that a n is smaller than b n almost everywhere. I will let you verify that this definition satisfies all the properties of an order relation. So that is it. We have fully defined what we call the ultra power star r. It is the quotient of the direct power rn emerging from the equivalence relation defined by an ultra filter. Let us now see where the real numbers are hiding. For that, we aim to identify some special elements of star R with elements in R. This is a point where the notation is starting to make more sense. We are going to define a function, we're going to call it the star function, and this function takes value in R and gives us element in star R. For every real number, the function acting on this real number gives us the equivalence class of the constant sequence x, which we had already decided to call star x anyway. The star function is an isomorphism between R and its image, which means it is a homomorphism and it is bijective. I am here only going to focus on the fact that the function is a homomorphism. To show that, let us start by applying the star function on x plus y and simply follow all those steps to show that the star function acting on x plus y is equal to star x plus star y. And the same reasoning will apply for multiplication. Importantly, the star function is preserving the order between elements. So we can make the following statement. Star x is smaller than star y, if and only if x is smaller than y. The derivation is not hard. I have done half of it here, and I will let you work on the other half. Let us recap what we have learned. On one side, we have the real numbers. On the other side, we have star r, which includes some special elements, which we write star x. Those elements define the subset we are going to write star r tilde. And the function, the star function, is an isomorphism allowing us to go from r to all the elements in the subset of star r. In other words, all the star elements behave exactly like the real number. And soon enough, we will stop making a difference between x and star x because they are in essence the same thing, star x simply being another representation of the real number x. It is fun to define the inverse of the star function. We're going to call it the lower star function, taking element in star r tilde and giving us real number. So that the lower star function acting on star x is equal to x, which looks much better without the brackets. And if a here is an element of star r tilde, then the lower star function acting on a is a real number. And we can write the relation which is here. But of course, in star r, we have other elements which are not in the special set. For example, curly n, which is the equivalent class of the sequence capital N, which is defined here. You can see that n is different from star x elements of the special sets. As an example, you can try to compare the sequence n to any constant sequence. There is only one element where the sequence agree, and they are different almost everywhere, so that n is different from star x. 
We can also show that n is larger than star x for any x, simply because the set of integer where elements of n are smaller than x is finite. Therefore, the complement is infinite and belongs to f, leading to the statement n is larger than star x. In other words, n is larger than the representation of any real number. Identically, we could define m like here and show that m is larger than n. We can also define epsilon as the equivalent class of the sequence 1, 1 half, 1 third, and so on, and show that epsilon is larger than 0, but it is also smaller than the representation of any real number, and smaller of any star x. And then you can define eta, for example, here, and show that eta is larger than 0, but smaller than epsilon. To summarize, star r is a field which contains a subset of special numbers which can be mapped to the real numbers. But we have constructed other elements which are not in the special set. In other words, there is a bigger set including the set of the real number. But on top of that, we have an order relation on star r, which allows us to say when one element is smaller than another one. So this allows us to draw everything on one line, star r, which include the real number, but other elements, such as capital N and capital M, minus N and minus M, epsilon eta, minus epsilon and minus eta, but numbers as well, such as 2 plus epsilon, pi plus epsilon minus 5 eta, minus n plus 2, minus n plus 2 epsilon. Those are the hyperreal numbers.